Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. In this video, I have combined all of my Nico Queen Rearing System content into one complete step-by-step -step instructional guide. If you use this system, please share your experiences in the comment section down below. I use several steps to, to work through this system. The first one, this day here, is, is going to be six days before I plan to graft. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a queen excluder in between my two main brood boxes and I'm going to insert the cassette um, and this will allow some extra time for the bees to, uh, to clean up the cups and, and prepare them for the queen to lay in. Let's get started. So I'm looking for the queen today. Okay, so here's my queen. Light's bad. I don't know if you can see her or not. But. So she's in the bottom box. And uh, we'll go ahead and keep her in the bottom box. That way we know where she is. I'm going to keep checking these frames just to make sure that there's not a queen cell or a queen cup. Okay, so what putting the queen excluder in here does, it keeps her in the bottom. And so when it's time when it's time to build a cell builder, I'll know that I won't have any eggs of the right age to make a queen when I take them out of the top box. So I could build my entire system out of one strong hive. Okay, so I ordered my Nico system from Kelly Beekeeping and uh, it comes in this nice cardboard box which is great to store it in um, because after they start using it they'll pull out comb. And I wanted to keep it separate from everything else and definitely keep it safe from any kind of bugs or anything like that. So I'm poking this in the middle. I'll leave these bees to settle down for a few days and then I'll show you my next step. So today is day zero. We're going to gather up the queen and put her into the cassette. Let's get started. Okay, so I found my queen. She's here on the frame. Okay, so we have the queen in the cassette. We're going to put her in the back in the same position in the top box. Put our queen excluder back on. Put our honey super back on. Okay, so I just used a queen clip to catch my queen. And then I held it over the entrance hole of the Nico cassette and just opened it slightly to and gave her time to just crawl out on her own into the into the cassette. I'm I don't have a good dexterity and that was the the easiest way for me to do it. Today we're going to continue our series on the Nico Queen rearing system. Today is day 1. So I'm simply going to release the queen from the cassette and put her back into the bottom box. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to use my hive tool and pop the side off of the cassette. I'm going to make certain that <clears throat> I'm opening up the side with the, the queen excluder side and not the side with all of my cups. Okay, and now she's on this comb here and I'll just wait for her to go down into the hive, which she did. Put this back on. Put the cassette back in the top box. Put my queen excluder back on. Put my top box on. Put my honey super back on. Okay, so that's it for day one. In a couple of days, we'll start our cell starter. 
Today we are going to continue with our Nico Queen Ring System video series. So today is day three. That's three days since the eggs have been laid. So we need to prepare our cell starter. Let me show you what mine looks like. Okay, so mine is a, a five frame nuke that I built. Um, I left it extra tall so I could put screens in the bottom on both sides. I have a lid that fits extra well with an extra little lip on it. And then how I set this up before I, I go to my hive to, to build my starter is I have four frames in here of just random honey or uh, drawn comb or whatever to, re to space holders to replace to replace the four frames that I'm going to pull out to make my cell starter. Now also in the bottom of the cell starter I have a little clear plastic tub that I have used some good double stick tape to stick it to the bottom and I have a washcloth in it. I also have a really small hole drilled in the side of my box that I can put um, a hypodermic needle in there and continually add water as as the bees are in in here for three days they're going to need more water than I can store up for them so okay so here we are at the hive I'm gonna remove my honey super and I'm just gonna remove four frames of uh, out of the, out of this second box that I have set up I know that that there won't be any eggs in there that are the right age for the bees to make an emergency queen out of so I will uh, I'll look for, for a frame that's heavy with pollen uh, and put it in and I'm just gonna put four in and that will leave me some space in the center to put my graft frame in tomorrow so let's get started okay so I'm looking for brood and pollen and uh, a queen cell or a queen cup just in case I missed it so here's a little bit of burr comb I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off and there's some emerging brood in here looks good I'm gonna go ahead and put this frame in okay so I have a queen cup here it's empty, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, and remove it. All right. Once again, emerging brood. I'll take that one. A nice frame of emerging brood and some nectar. I'll take that one. Now I need a frame with some pollen. I want to try and find the frame with the most pollen on it that I can find. Okay, so this frame has some pollen and nectar in it, some honey. We'll put that in the middle. We want the pollen as close to our graph frame as we can get. I'm just going to go ahead and space these into the center. Leaving the extra space on the outside edge equally. Now I'm going to give it a couple extra frames of bees, a few shakes of bees. And then I'll fill this space back up with my space keepers. I'll put my honey super back on. Put my lid back on. Now I'm going to move my cell starter away in the shade for half an hour or so let the bees settle down and then I'll brush any remaining bees that are on the outside off 
I'll strap it up good and then I'll take it inside my home um, and uh, and keep a good close eye on the water level there and the temperature is really stable there and I found that I have better success getting the cell started if I can just if the bees don't have to uh, constantly be worrying with changing temperature if it's steady it seems to help out real well today we're going to continue our video series on the Nico queen rearing system today's day four that means it's grafting day so we're going to go ahead and remove the cassette from the hive take it inside do our egg transfer our little queen cup uh, transfer into our our bars and then we'll install the the queen rearing frame into our cell starter. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the frame here and I'll, I'll gently brush the bees off. And then I'll pass it off to my wife and she could take it inside and, and uh, we'll begin our transfer. Um, I'll fill this space with the same frame of honey that I took out originally. It's very important to not shake this frame because it will dislodge our eggs. We don't want to do that. So be sure and sweep the bees off gently. Okay, so I've got the hive put back together. I'm going to head on inside and we'll do our transfer. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid off the back side of this cassette. And then I'm going to look at the back side here of these cups and kind of check for eggs and jelly and they all look like they're doing really well but what I'll do because my vision is not that of a spring chicken anymore I will uh, I'll select a cup and then hand it to my wife to double check it Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the bars in the frame and then we'll, uh, we'll take it out and put it in the colony. So I put a little bit of wax on the end of these bars to help keep them in place and it makes them slide in but not freely. All right, well, we'll get suited back up and get them in the, in the cell starter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack the lid on this and smoke the bees down off the top. I'm going to grab my hive tool and get some space back in between these. And we'll put our uh, put our graph frame right in the middle, and then I'm gonna get a pollen patty and put in there real quick. Okay, some smoke them down off the top bars. Try and keep as many bees in here as I can, and then I put a little piece of pollen patty here on uh, 
either side of the frame and then uh, simply because they're really cold they came right out of the freezer I don't want to take a chance and lower the temperature of my of my colony. Alright we'll close this back up and we're done okay so now that we have them buttoned back up we'll let them sit here for 30 minutes or so to settle down um, we'll brush all the bees off and bring them back inside I'll leave them in there for a day or depending on the weather two and then bring them out and put them in into my cell builder colony which is the same place that they originally came from today we're going to continue our video series on the Nico queen rearing system today is day six we're going to remove our graph frame from from our cell starter and put it back into our cell builder. Let's get started. Okay, so if you remember, we put in the center a frame of honey. It was just a, a space keeper. So we'll pull it out. shake the bees off. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm going to <clears throat> position some frames here where I have the most uh, brood next to the cell starter as possible. And here's a, a fully capped frame of brood. Looks really nice. I want that in my next to center position. This was a frame I put in to keep space, so I'll shake it off. This is another frame I put in to keep space, I'll shake it off. Here's another nice frame of brood, we'll put that on the second side, leaving a spot in the middle. Okay, so these are the bees that came out of here. We're going to open them up, scrape off this pollen patty here, put a little bit of it on the top bars, just to make certain. Been having some uh, really inclement weather and uh, I want to just make certain that no matter what, they've got enough pollen. The first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and transfer my graph frame. Alright, let's take a look. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all, on, all 10 on the top are accepted. All ten in the center bar are accepted, and it looks like we missed one on the bottom down here. So let's get them in here and uh, and get them going. And then I'll just take these frames, with my worker bees on them. Put them back in my box. Okay, and then I have a piece of pollen patty here. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and lay it on the top, just to ensure that I've got plenty of pollen. All right, I'll smoke the bees off the top bars here. I'll put my honey super back on. Okay, so now I'll leave this uh, I'll leave this this box here and let the bees work their way out of it. Uh, it has a tub of water stuck to the bottom of it, and I don't want to dump that out. So I'll leave them settle down for an hour or so, come out, check on them, and retrieve my equipment. 
today is day 13 in our Nico Queen Rearing System series. So today what we're going to do is we're going to check our graph frame for viable queen cells and then we're going to go make nukes to match that number. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is just remove the honey super. Also be able to check for how much honey I got coming in. And it's feeling heavy. Oh Lord. That. <clears throat> Getting full, which is a good sign. Okay, I'm going to smoke the bees off the top bar here. Pull our frame out of our nine frame brood nest and give it a look see. Okay, looks like I've got a non viable one here. So I don't know about this one here, it's kind of short, but I'll stick it in a nuke and see what happens. So that makes 29 out of 30. Give them a little smoke to get them off the top bars and off the edges. Then I'll put my honey super back on. And it's getting heavy. While I'm here, I'm going to check and see if I need to add a, a super to this hive. Well, the honey's starting to get capped up, so it looks like it could use another box. Okay, now we'll head on out to our other apiary, and uh, we'll make up a bunch of nukes. So I'll see you there. Okay, so I made it down here to my apiary that I'm going to pull my brood frames from to make my nukes. Um, and so, while I'm at it, I'll check my honey supers. Um, here's my here's my nuke, the two frame box or two nuke box that I make. Um, I make special lids with winter ventilation for over each each colony, and then I have uh, I have in the center here just I have a divider that runs a full length, um, and then next to the divider. I put in a, a frame of honey and out from the divider I put in an empty brood frame that I'm going to swap out into my uh, donor hive. Um, then I have, <clears throat> if I have it, I have drawn brood comb and empty comb on the outside. I'm running a little short right now so I have foundation. Not the best but it'll work. Well, that one's heavy so it's full of honey. Alright so I have some burr comb here. I'm going to smoke the bees off the top bars and then I'm going to scrape my burr comb off. Alright, now I'm just going to start my way in and look for a look for a frame with some brood in it. This is all honey and nectar. The next frame in is capped honey. The next frame in is pollen. Okay, so here's a nice frame of capped brood, and they're starting to backfill it with nectar, so... If I'm not careful, they'll, uh, they'll start thinking about swarming here pretty soon. There's still some open spaces in here. I'm going to look for the queen very carefully. <clears throat> And I'm going to trade out a frame here. I'm going to skip a frame. Okay, another nice frame of brood. No queen. 
trade it out. Okay, a lot of nectar and some cat brood here. Um, look for the queen. If I don't see her, I'll give this a shake into the colony um, that I'm making just to give it enough strength to keep to keep them that brood that's in there alive for until it hatches. Okay, no queen. I'll give it one more shake. We're done here. I'll put the lid on these guys. And then we're done. Today is day 14 of our Nico Queen Rearing System series. So what that means is we're going to transfer our queen cells into our nucleus colonies. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is give my bees a puff of smoke and then we'll remove <clears throat> our graft frame. Okay, so now we're down here to our graft frame. I'm just gonna lightly smoke the bees off the top bar. And I brought this extra box here transfer my frame in um, and it'll act as an incubator. This is the frame that I took out when I uh, originally made the, the system and so I'm going to put it back in. So there's our frame with all the bees on it and they'll help to keep it warm and incubated while we travel to our apiary with our nukes ready to go. The other frames that I have in this box are just spacers. Okay, so while we're in here, we don't want to forget to remove the queen excluder. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we'll take our graft frame full of our queen cells out to our uh, nucleus apiary and we'll transfer them. I'll see you there. Okay, so we're here in my nuke apiary. Uh, I'll go ahead and just get started. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my hive, my double nuke, and see if I still have bees in here, which I do. Now, if you'll notice here, this side is really full of bees, and this side has a few in it. And what I've noticed is when I have a row of hives set up that one colony will catch all the drift bees and this is it so this is a really strong colony here and this is just you know normal now I'm gonna have to remove a bar out of my grafting frame and I'll start with the top one you'll notice that a lot of these are webbed together. I'll start with the bottom one. I'm going to cut these loose real carefully with my hive tool. Now this is a this is a quality hive tool. I bought this from Kelly Beekeeping. It's uh, their brand. And it's a little more money, but it's worth it. And then I'm going to push this bar out of here okay so I have a bar of queen cells loose put this back in here so the bees can keep it incubated in fact I'll leave these set in here while I'm working on this I'm just going to pop a queen cell loose and I'm going to pry apart these frames here. This is the brood frame that I put in. This is a frame of honey and I'm going to put this 
cell in between those frames. Just like that. Let it sit on the, the little button on top. Honey frame, brood frame. Put our queen cell in here. Put it back together. I'm just going to work my way on down the row. In this video, I'm going to show how to set up the Nico Queen ring system frame. Both the cassette and the grafting frame. Let's get started. Okay, so this is how our, our kit shows up. Um, I obviously ordered mine from Kelly Beekeeping, so we can look inside and we can see here that we have our cassette, both of our sockets, the roller cages, and a package of cups. Now, the instructions don't come in English. Kelly includes a sheet here that's been translated but not very well. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to, uh, to understand. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my uh, cassette put into a frame. So a few tricks here. First of all, I'll determine where the holes are at there on one side. So I'm going to take this off. Use a little pry tool to help pop it loose. set it aside. <clears throat> now here this plug in the back um, I'm gonna pop it out so that it will sit flat and flush. Set it aside. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a old piece of a lumber here and I'm gonna set set my frame on that piece of board just to keep it flat. And when I do that then everything comes up flush. If I don't set this little board under here uh, the frame will raise up on the sidebars. So I can get it flat like that and then I'll just go ahead and put my two screws in. The size of screw that work really good for me are number five by three quarter pan head screw. Okay so I just used a regular frame, pop the foundation out of it um, and now I'm ready to go. I'll go ahead and put everything back where it belongs. Clean excluder side goes on the cup side here and the uh, put my cap back in so I don't lose it. Alright, now I'm ready to go. As I use this system, the bees will draw a comb out and fill this all in. So after you use this once or twice, this will be solidly filled in with uh, honeycomb. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my graph frame put together. Now, I don't use the roller cages um, a lot of people do, and if you do, you won't be able to do a three-bar system like I use. You'll be able to get maybe one row. So I just don't use them. I can do uh, I can do 30 graphs um, with the way I have this set up here. Works out real well for me. Okay, so I use a standard top bar that I make. I simply, instead of the notch being three-eighths of an inch wide, I widen it out to three-quarters on both sides. Standard bottom bar, um, I show how to make these in my other videos. The side piece is eight and a quarter of an inch long, and it's just a piece of three-quarter by three-quarter. I go ahead and put um, matching dados in the side that are uh, three-eighths of an inch wide, and then I cut special I just take regular bottom boards and I cut them to fit. So these are 16 and 3 quarters of an inch. Three of those and then I attach my cups to it. Now I'm, I'm showing you my old one here that I've used a few times because I have wax on the ends so the bars don't fall out. And the wax keeps them in, firmly in place but easy enough, loose enough that you can get them out easily. So right when you fir first put this together, these are going to want to just kind of fall out. Get a piece of wax comb, uh, rub it on the edge here to make it sticky, and they'll stay in place. All right, next trick, I'm going to show you how I attach these cups. Okay, so you can see here that I've made some marks of where I space out 
my pieces. I started an inch and three quarters of an inch in and then every inch and a half after that I put one and that comes out evenly. Okay so I've just been using uh, half inch nails um, to attach these little cups and half inch nail is really little so it's almost impossible to use a hammer. I'll show you what I do. I grab the I grab the nail and then I'll center my cup where I want it here on my mark and I just push it in with my thumb to get it started slightly and then the magic trick is I grab a pair of pliers and I press it in. And I just keep doing that throughout the whole process press those nails in with a pair of pliers and I'm hooked up good. Now 3 8 is not quite wide enough for the half inch nail. You can see here it has a little pokey sticking out the back. So if you're creative and have a little extra lumber you can you can make your own sidebars like in this instance here I, I made them half inch wide. That way the nails don't stick out the back and life is good. So as I stated earlier um, this will need a little bit of wax to keep it from falling out while it's brand new. I hope that this guide has helped you. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.